problem is we do not know how many we will have to eat to have a hole in our own intestines. That's a possibility, which are being questioned. Then why do we need GMO? Because only if I market the seed, I can have a control on the food. Please understand the components. Understand. And moreover, we have come to a conclusion that God or nature, you will call it by any name, does not know how to produce fruits, does not know how to produce grains. For us in, in India, food is medicine. Food is medicine. It's only for the Westerners, they require medicine in food. Medicine in food. They brought in golden rice. And for those children who are not aware, this carotin pigment for golden rice was taken from not carrot, but from daffodils. Daffodil is a yellow flower. William Wordsworth poem, I wandered lonely as a cloud, right? So it was taken from there. We objected to this because you have this because you have to eat at least 12 kgs to 15 kgs of rice per day if you have to draw that much of vitamin A. It was a business strategy. Then they brought in BT cotton. BT stands for Bacillus thuringiensis, not for biotechnology. Bacillus thuringiensis. Now, it was introduced as a non-edible crop. You may also nod your head. Yes, sir. Non-edible crop. But in Madurai, they have this Paruti Pal. They make milk out of cotton seeds. Nagur, Nagapatnam, they make Paruti Halwa. And from the cotton seeds, you extract the oil. And you make an oil cake, which is given to the cattle, whose milk we are eating, drinking. We do not know what it will have a long-term effect. We are not aware of it. And I am not going to comment about it now. What happened was, many of you are not aware of it. You may feel that BT is good. Fair enough. But this is how first BT was introduced. For the pink bollworm was the pest, green-colored pest. And there were natural predators, which are in plus mark here. The moment we started using BT with insecticide application, because BT seed is sold along with a HT spray. Now, this HT spray destroyed all the predators. And the secondary parasites started taking up and the secondary pest, American bollworm, took over. So we have BT cotton 1, BT cotton 2, BT cotton 3. Now BT cotton 4 is coming. It is not stable. Then they wanted BT brinjal. Are bhai, Bainan Raja, right? Katrika, Raja. Why BT Katrika? Because South India, Sambar incomplete without brinjal. North India, Baigan ka bharta, very important. Should we have BT brinjal? One brinjal for the whole country, one variety for the whole country. Do you know, children, India has 60 varieties of brinjal. Tamil Nadu alone has more than 22 varieties of brinjal. Government of India's NBPGRI, National Bureau of Plant Genetic Resources, has 4,460 accessions of brinjal. And we want one brinjal from a company. And government permitted trials, including in Tamil Nadu, which very recently has been suspended due to some pressure, has been suspended. Then they wanted to bring in mustard. Here you have to be careful. Mustard was being introduced in a different name as a hybrid. Dhara mustard hybrid. Yes, it is a hybrid. Is a hybrid of genetically modified plant. It is not called Bacillus Bt because they have not used Bacillus thuringiensis. They use Bacillus amyloliquefaciens. This is also a HT plant for glufosinate. That one was for glyphosate. This one for glufosinate, which is commonly called Basta. Remember this thing, children. In fact, I work against GMOs. I work, I'm an advisor for the Organic Farming Association of India. I'm designing the organic farming. Uh, inputs and policies for the government as well. Now, what happens is biodiversity will create all the noises and biotechnology will one day shoot it down. You may ask me, are you against biotechnology? I will say no. I am not against biotechnology because I am the former head of the department of biotechnology. I am not against biotechnology. Biotechnology is an excellent tool. It is something like a knife. With a knife, you can peel potato. At the same time, you can kill a person. Where you use the technology is important. We cannot destroy our biodiversity with the help of this tool. This tool is very important. No insulin without this tool. No medicines without this tool. Excellent tool. But where it should be applied, this alone you have to be very careful. 
okay and then the government now wants to bring in a seed bill unfortunately we had the covid so it is slightly going back the draft seed bill tells me that we have to enhance productivity and profitability and that the seeds should be guaranteed and they will not permit the truly labeled seeds so far it was being sold as truthfully labeled seeds for the past 30 years which means one farmer cannot sell seeds to another farmer please understand the nuances which means only corporate bodies can sell which means our right to save and exchange our time tested seeds goes what happens to bija swaraj which is a part of our own living system i leave it to you to think i am not going to give you answers yeah and foreign countries are also looking at our biodiversity basmati is our rice in fact uh, the entire belt uh, india bangladesh pakistan basmati and the us they take our germplasm modify a few genes in the university of texas and called it as texmati they patented it that is where government of india rose up fought a case spent a lot of money and finally we won the gi tag for basmati is that clear so please also work on gi tax try to understand what are just global indicator tax and please go into the details recently koil patti kadalamitai for our south indian children please understand so this is an unholy marriage between science and market for those children who want to know more please buy this book is available online i think it's only 350 rupees this gives you wonderful inputs on gm crops and how it's going to impact our health and ecosystems cloning is going to come in you can go more details about it where just from one spare animal you can make many animals you you remember dolly the sheep that was by cloning surrogate motherhood has started which has raised ethical questions now what are the ethical questions which happened especially with human beings two cases in the us and one case in pune here in india a family this girl falls in love with this boy they want to get married they got married this girl has a problem in the uterus she is fertile but she cannot conceive she is fertile she can produce viable ova but she cannot conceive so they look for a surrogate mother genuine but at that time what happens is the mother of the girl itself comes and says why are you looking outside i will surrogate for you so the sperms are collected from e the ovum is collected from c it is fertilized and implanted in b the mother of the girl so when the child is born to the world the child belongs to the mother to science the child belongs to the daughter so these ethical questions came into being which i again leave it to you it's all broad mindedness it's all certain things happening how things are going to be solved in future nanotechnology please update yourself with nanotechnology please update yourself but what has happened is with biotechnology new things have started coming in hormones hormones one of the hormone is rbgh recombinant bovine growth hormone the idea behind this hormone is you inject the hormone into the cow then you can take all the milk possible from the cow all the milk possible but the cow will develop mastitis of the udder in about 3 to 4 years it will get disease the mastitis of the udder this is on one side but girl children drinking this milk in rural areas because in cities it is pasteurized non pasteurized milk drinking in rural areas a girl child will attain puberty at the age of 8 or 9 i have been talking about this for long but people did not understand the consequences today very recently a news on pudhi talaimurai just born female calf just born female calf watch at it irundadai kandu adai paartha podu adil paal sirappadu theriya vandathu adan pinnar paal madiyil paal karandu paartha podu 1/2 liter varai paal kudaithathu idu kurithu kalnadai maruthavargalidam ketta podu hormone prachanayal miga aridaga idu pondra nigalum newly born calf giving half a liter of milk please understand please understand there's a lot of biopolitics going on it's a new branch by itself and then i come to soil i want to talk to you a few things about soil because that's my own subject i love soil 
and there were some questions related to soil children soil is food soil is food no soil no food don't tell me that hydroponics can replace soil it's not possible or aquaponics i'm very familiar with all these components just understand no soil no food and it's very important than what you think right that's why 2015 was declared as the international year of soils please remember that the soil have an age soil has no age soil has no age the rock has an age so please imagine this old instrument please remember this old instrument recollect it this main stone consider it as the rock and this tool which is used to handle that is the we call it as the pestle the pestle is the weathering process presume it that way as a weathering process soil is formed every day soil is formed every day gradually very gradually it is formed and again soil has been declared as a mineral matter by all the universities and all the modern sciences my work on soil started in 1978 79 and i started working on soils then i started applying logic to it to me it appeared that soil is more living than non living and when people asked me if it is living it should have a digestive system well you find a dog lying dead on the surface of the soil you go through the way two days three days it starts stinking but when you dig a hole put the dog and bury it you don't get the smell what is happening inside it's getting decomposed sir. composting is happening who does it microbes are doing it who are there in our intestine microorganisms so logically i can say that the soil also has a digestive system then they ask me whether the soil has a respiratory system just like you and i take in oxygen and give out carbon dioxide soil takes in oxygen gives out carbon dioxide so logically soil has a respiratory system then they ask me whether the soil has a circulatory system very simple thought if i'm hurt in my leg i go to a doctor doctor gives me a tablet i don't feed the tablet to my leg i put it in my mouth how does it reach there the blood takes it over there circulation you have plants at home do you pull the plant every day from the soil and feed the roots no we put it on the top of the soil how do the nutrients and the water go till the roots through channels created by soil organisms so soil logically has a circulatory system then they ask me whether it has an excretory system just like we go to the restroom and throw away urea because it is a salt not healthy for us diluted with water and excreted as urine excess salt of the soil is not taken inside the soil it is brought on top of the soil and thrown out any saline soil or sodic soil you will find it covered with salts i'll show you some pictures later then they ask me whether it has a reproductive system i just told you about in vitro fertilization whatever may be fertilization can take place the zygote should be kept into the uterus of a woman uterus of the mother only then it grows your tissue culture plants have to be placed in the soil only then it grows so logically soil also has a reproductive system the ultimate was when one learned professor from the university asked me you will allow pacing la the soil have a brain of indicator i remembered then my math teacher who told me that there is soil in my head yeah soil does it have a brain to my experience yes soil has some logical thinking you dig a pit and you put any biomass into it or gobar into it whatever it is it will get composted but you put a seed into the soil it will germinate your soil can distinguish what it has to decompose what it has to allow to germinate is that clear so such a beautiful soil people started calling it a soil fertility and fertility got related with fertilizers you go and give your soil sample anybody who does not believe in this take a soil sample and give it to any soil testing laboratory of the government or a private agricultural place they will analyze the soil and give you the report they will say npk tamil pulinga thalasathu manisathu sambal sathu npk nitrogen phosphate potash micronutrients ph ec and then they will put recommendation and in that recommendation they will say 
add so much of urea, so much of uh, DAP and so much of potash. So fertility got related with fertilizers. So we call it as soil health. Not man valam, but man nalam. In soil health, we include the microorganisms, the soil organisms, everything. Today, nutrients have depleted from the soil. You see, a pregnant woman, do you inject the food for the baby? No. A pregnant woman is sent to the mother's house so that she will rest, she will eat properly and grow a healthy child. So you have to feed the soil if you want to have a good healthy crop. Our nutrient level in our plants have started depleting since 2010. And what the present government has decided is we will fortify the food. We will not take care of the soil. We will fortify the food. Please understand these concepts. Please understand. Salt used to be sold in baskets at home by people who used to take from the sea, right? And then suddenly we come to a sort of a conclusion that only iodized salt is good. So salt goes to a corporate company at a very, very, very affordable cost. And then it is, uh, you know, like iodized, purified and comes to your table as a powder at an extraordinary cost. The same thing is going to happen with our food. Food will not be able to be sold by the farmer, but will be sold through the corporates because they got to be fortified. Already, iron fortified rice is being delivered and distributed in ration shops mixed with the normal rice. Please understand all these things. I will not go into the details. Just understand. The other side important component is waste, waste management. We know about waste. First step of waste management, there may be a question to you on resource management, waste management. First step is reduction. And we have been burning and throwing things. We all know about what happened in Dalu Lake, Belandu Lake in Bangalore. It is not just Bangalore, even Coimbatore, the Noyal River is all flooded with all soaps and things. And then we just don't bother where we urinate. We pollute water bodies. Can we compost this waste? And when you talk about composting, there is aerobic composting, where air goes inside. And there is anaerobic composting, which is production of biogas. And one more thing is vermi tech. Vermi is derived from the term vermes, earthworm. Tech is technology. That's an earthworm. There are three types of earthworm. I will not go into the details for you children. Just understand surface, subsurface, bottom. The surface worms do the composting. Remember that. The subsurface little bit contribute to composting. These are our local worms. And every soil has a distinct worm. This worm lives in acid soils. This is how an earthworm goes and feeds. It takes the food. The food enters, is crushed by the gizzard, and then goes into the stomach, which is called as the crop, where digestion takes place. And then the food goes into the intestine. Every segment has kidney-like structures called as nephridia, which pour urea. So carbon nitrogen combined comes out in the form of castings. That's why vermicompost is supposed to be very good. These are actually vermicasts. Vermicast. Earthworms are hermaphrodites, which means male and female are present in every earthworm. Male and female present in every earthworm. But in spite of it, they require a partner. As you see in this picture, they are mating with each other. They require a partner. And after partnership, they produce cocoons. And from these cocoons, the young one comes out. That is the life story. Okay. This is our local Indian worm, which can do composting. Very good worm. Periunix excavators. It's called as the Indian blue. It is used in Australia. This is Icenia fetida, which is called as a red wriggler. Please remember these terms. Red wriggler. This is African night crawler, which is uterus. I think almost the whole country now uses this particular thing for composting. It's very simple to compost, Raja. Very simple. You put decomposed material, put the earthworms and leave a cow dung cake on top. 
that's composting the other worms now if you ask me cow dung cake where is it available unfortunately look at this is being sold by amazon by flipkart and by big basket and look at the cost so what happens to rural economy please start working on that i look forward that a few of you should become is officers during my lifetime and i should try to interact with you guys yeah start thinking raja start thinking and that's what we compose that's what we compose very simple you know nature always throws green leaves and yellow leaves and brown leaves together because composting happens only when there is a mixture green leaves have more nitrogen brown leaves have more carbon we do composting a very simple method i will not go into the details the details are available in my website i will give it to you finally but microorganism has to be added there is a business for it also but the simplest source of microorganism is cow dung i use plain cow dung yeah mixed in water very simple create a heap temperature goes inside very high this is very important for me because the high temperature will eliminate unwanted pathogens unwanted pests unwanted seeds once they are eliminated i turn them over after about 15 days steam comes out and then the whole unit comes reduces in size for about in about 40 45 days cool it slightly sieve it give it to the earthworms the earthworms eat that and give me vermi compost which can be used as such or sieved for packing and that is vermi compost that's very simple raja very simple these are all some of the designs this is in my own house my own house uh you can do it in this sort of containers you can do it in plastic containers you can do it in wooden containers you can do it in tires only thing is water should not stagnate inside right very simple procedures some models i just want to show you share with you which i have done for farmers in india farmers in uh, different countries you can do it on the ground you can do it in tanks you can this i designed it for the police academy here in chennai very simple units this i did it for haryana and this in goa there are several 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 things simple pots or we can even dig a pit like this yeah and then do composting over here at the same time you plant inside on the yellow arrow you have all the um, coriander mint and spinach on the outer side where the green thing you can plant the okra the what i mean is lady's finger the brinjal and then you can have tomatoes so on one side you do waste management on the other side you harvest vegetables these are all very successful models which i am teaching and training tribal families i did a big training program for uh, at muniguda i am using certain slides out of respect and regard for my friends because devji is no more devji sarangi passed away uh, he did a lot of work for tribal families so i used to go and teach those tribal families over there and teaching the state institute for rural uh, development in panchayat raj here in uh, tamil nadu he is again ranjit is no more very simple units where composting can be done i used to use sticks and do it uh, ranjit is no more he passed away now modern thing is you can even use this green mesh do composting very simple mechanisms we have uh, this sort of uh, four tank systems this sort of four tanks we design them of course there is uh, no time to explain to you just have an idea because all these details are there in my uh, website i'll give the website finally and how to do this how to handle this because i want to share other important details because these details are in my uh, website there are also two tank systems industrial solid waste management through composting is very good very simple raja this i did for kcp sugars why you just have an idea when you ask about waste management this i did it for mr sundaram clayton who manufacture tvs motorcycles using their own sludge and uh, canteen waste and garden waste right this is for the perfective animal who sell those alpen lebe sweets and this is for future of polyesters while doing such things i came out with a new design a new design and that was this design which today the pollution control board is recommending others a simple design i made it in such a way that one side is kept open so that people can walk in 
and do it because many of these units are handled by women. So they can walk in and they can handle it. It's very easy for them to do it. Very simple designs. Make these chambers just for having you so that when you write, you can recollect these pictures. Right? These are all simple designs of sheds. This was done for Godrich Company by my student, composting and then vermicomposting. This is the other group of students for MRC Nagar here in Chennai. This we did for UNIDO, United Nations Industrial Development Organization for sludge. Today, ready-made bags, ready-made uh, tanks are all available. Available. Lots of work is being done by the government of Tamil Nadu. Government of Tamil Nadu is one of the pioneers in these things, to be honest with you. And Mr. K7 is one very interesting character. He's an executive officer from the corporations. He learns a lot and does it everywhere. This is for the Madra, the Madrandagam sugar mills. And the SIRD is doing a big job, department, state rural department of, uh, and Panchayat Raj, where we have been teaching many, many people over there. Very simple mechanisms on how to handle. Remember simple, ma. Just sharing with you so that you can recollect when you write a topic on waste management. Material is brought in, composted, and goes for vermicomposting. Goes for vermicomposting. This is vermicomposting. These are all my designs which I had given to the government. This is my country. Any rural area I go, the temples are thrown open for me where I talk to the people. And from there, we go to the field and teach them how to do it. Lots of interests, lots of rural areas, lots of people we have interacted. Gradually, things are picking up because we make, want to make people independent. That is the main idea. Making people independent, women folk entrepreneurs, making them earn money. Because unless rural economy is maintained in rural region, the rural places cannot flourish. Please, children, when you evaluate any technology, please look at it holistically. Don't sit in an air-conditioned hall inside your IES academy and try to think that your work is confined to those people alone. But if you are going to vermicomposting, beware of this guy. This is a planarian which can crawl, come. You would have noticed this fellow. Sometimes they come in the garden. They will have a triangular head. Now, these fellows come and eat away the earthworms. So be careful with them. Second, any composting you do, any composting, these fellows will come. In. Now, these are caterpillars which will mature into rhinoceros beetle. Rhinoceros beetle can attack coconut trees. So if you're doing composting, and if you see these fellows, give it to your chicken or poultry, they enjoy it. Or crows, they enjoy it. They enjoy it. Okay. I'm worried about a few things. One is what US is trying to do. US wants us to buy this machine for shredding. Then they want us to buy this machine for sieving. Then they want us to buy this machine for turning over. Bigger machines for turning over. And then they want us to buy this machine for sieving. And then they want us to buy this machine for mixing. And then they want us to buy this machine for spreading in the field. Do we need it? That's the reason why organic food is costly in the West. Don't compare West with India. Please understand these concepts. And one more stupid thing which is happening is that this machine is coming in the market that they can give us compost in 24 hours. Nobody can give us compost in 24 hours. These are volume reduction machines. Let them call it as volume reduction machine. I have no, 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 no objection to it. But unfortunately, they're selling it as composters. If you want some volume to reduce in 24 hours and compost it, the best machine, which I would recommend wholeheartedly, is cattle. Give cattle any greenery, 24 hours it will give you dung. Dung can easily be handled. You either produce biogas or you do compost. Your choice, whatever you want. Sir, why should we do all this? What is the significance? Because there was one intelligent question asked by some students before the session itself. Children, you are going to a big place. You are all seated and there is a huge pond. There is fish and you caught the fish. The fish died. You don't have a fridge. You don't have ice. But you have to keep the fish for three days. So what do I do? I add salt to it. What will happen if I add salt? Microorganisms which not, will not multiply. 
if microorganisms do not multiply, the fish becomes curvad, dry fish. The same thing we are doing with our soils. I told you soil is a living organism and I keep on adding salts. Nitrate is a salt of nitrogen. Phosphate is a salt of phosphorus. Potash is a salt of potassium. Keep adding salts. The soil is getting converted into a curvad. And there's a saying in Tamil, very good saying in Tamil, you know, like, uh, the more salt you add, you feel thirsty. Any food you take and there's too much of salt, you immediately take water. The same way, soil, when you add too much of chemicals, it demands water. I'm not talking out of passion. We have done lots of experiments. My PhD students have done the thesis on this. What happens to moisture content and how mulching can reduce. The moment we say mulching can be very helpful, people want to use plastic mulch. Plastic mulch doesn't provide a substratum for microorganisms to multiply. This, the significance is lost. And children, you would have heard about edema. Edema is swelling of the hand or feet, right? The swelling comes because salt goes and stays there. When salt stays, water comes and loads over there. So swelling comes in. The hand looks beautiful, red like a tomato and solid like a potato. The same way vegetables grown with salts, the salt goes and stays, the vegetable looks beautiful. Please understand these concepts. Understand basic concepts of ecology. When I walk in the rain and hold the umbrella, water falls around me. Instead of umbrella, I stand under the shade of the tree. Water falls around me. A few drops may fall on my head, but mostly falls around me, around the canopy. Why should water fall around the canopy? Because the roots which drink are over there. So where should I water? Where should I manure? Where the canopy ends. Unfortunately, we don't do this. We do this. And then we say nothing grows. Please understand these things, children. This is what we have been teaching farmers on how to improve themselves. Plenty of foliar sprays we are teaching. Making use of all these burrows in earthworms. We taught them how to produce vermi wash. I introduced this in 1995. A child is doing it for farmers. Seeing our posters. So good. This is Dr. Natarajan, who works with Panjakavya. Excellent. He's a good brother of mine. He has done a lot of work in Panjakavya. I have worked on vermi wash. Our joint production gives us excellent results. This is how work Panjakabe has produced. Very simple. They're all, they're all available on my, on my website. Don't worry. These things are available. How to prepare this sort of liquid fertilizers. How to prepare fish amino. We are trying to make farmers independent. How to prepare this Tenga palmore. How to prepare bioenzymes. And then simple solutions by soaking banana peels using it for hibiscus plants glowing beautifully, how to use eggshells along with banana peels, and how eggshells can be roasted, put with vinegar, and you produce a beautiful fertilizer in, in, just, in just about 48 hours. And dilute it and spray it. All this we are teaching. And if you are preparing a fertilizer, you want to know whether it works or not, just put the fertilizer diluted in a glass bottle, have control as water, keep onions on top. The, if the roots grow beautifully, then your fertilizer is beautiful. That's all. You don't need to ask any scientist. You are the scientist. But we have worked in detail. All the names you find at the bottom in some of these slides, they were all my PhD students. So I always use the names of my students whenever I use their slides, their work. I have worked, we have worked on the xylem vessels. We have worked on the chromosomes of these plants and we have worked at the molecular structures of these compounds. So children, I'm not just talking out of passion. We are talking with scientific evidences as to what all we are there. And excellent knowledge by people. You see, I told this farmer, <laughs> and the <laughs> I told him to use the gunny bag. He says, no, your idea is useless. You see what he has done? He has created a drum with vermi wash in Panjagavya, put a hole, and he completely fatigates his uh, field. His IPR, his intellectual property. So beautiful. Similarly, pest repellents we have prepared. We prepared pest repellents based on this simple knowledge. The greatest scientist on the farm is Professor Goat. Take a goat for a walk. Whatever a goat eats, let it eat. What a goat does not eat has pest repellent properties. 
whatever plant a goat does not eat has pest repellent properties. You take them four or five varieties. For example, this particular plant at the bottom, this is Adathoda. The name comes from Adathoda Vasika. The name Adathoda comes from Tamil. Adathoda. Adathoda. Is that clear? So these sort of plants, we teach them how to prepare decoctions, how to use them as pest repellents. Make as far as possible. Once you do that, then all these friendly insects come in. Here alone, I would like to tell you one more definition, Raja. Please, children, it used to be intellectual property rights, IPR. But now the name is changed to EPR, Ecological Pest Management. Not intellectual, sorry. It used to be Integrated Pest Management, IPM. It is now called as EPM, Ecological Pest Management. Ecological Pest Management. Very simple. You get all these organisms coming back to control and you get this sort of beautiful ladybirds. These ladybirds can come and catch all the aphids and eat them. Very simple mechanism. Children, for your own sake, and if in case you would like to have roof gardens, you can easily do roof gardens on the roof, three feet easily within the boundary wall and on top of these uh, beams. Very simple. Spread the weight by using this sort of uh, bamboos or casuarina. How much soil is required? Four inches of soil is enough for growing mint, pudina. And the small container is enough for growing methi, vendium, fenugreek. Very simple mechanisms. You can even grow them in coconut shells. Grow fenugreek, microgreens. They are becoming this. I do it in my own house. This is my own house. In my own house, I have a lot of, even in a small space, I do a lot of work, a lot of work. How much of water is required? Even for us, one glass of water is enough, right? We don't need a bucket of water or a swimming pool. So give water in minimum quantity. And uh, once you give manure, then manure holds the water. Fertilizers don't hold the water. Water, very essential. Water is decreasing. A few slides on water management. Can we do some rainwater harvesting? This is my own house. The entire side area is complete rainwater harvesting. Our roof water is harvested. Why I'm trying to tell you is Punjab, where we have five rivers. Punjab, this is the story. No water. I don't follow any plans. I follow the PRA method. Please note on the PRA method. Participatory rural appraisal. The villages draw the plan of the village. After the villages draw the plan, I asked the engineer of the water board to draw that plan and then we work, which is more Punjab needs water. Understand? We are drawing water like anything. So can we re-harvest water? Every household, in case there is a chapter for you on question on recycling of water, please remember there is gray water and black water. Gray water, what comes from the washing machine and from the bathrooms. Just a simple thing with the help of these plants. You can do gray water recycling. Very simple mechanism. A tank constructed with baffles. Grow the plant. That's the tank. Right? Now allow the water to come. That's water. Water coming from the washing machine. And this water goes through the whole unit and finally comes out. Finally comes out from this end, which can be used for gardening, which can be used for har uh, water harvesting, which can be used for flushing the toilets. Building waste. Building waste can be mixed with concrete and can easily be converted into tiles. And can easily be converted into tiles. You can see this. That's the rubber sheet taken, kept on a mold, and the tile is ready. Similarly, cotton waste, paper waste can be crushed and converted into beautiful handmade paper. This handmade paper, getting ready. That is 
hand made table. Very simple mechanisms are available. Only thing is, when you write, be careful. We don't have any good mechanism for medical waste. Any good mechanisms to dispose adult diapers. We have sanitary napkins. We have brought in simple incinerators. Electronic waste. These are all challenging us. These are all challenging us. Biofuel, please remember this. Very important topic for you all. Please don't recommend corn for biofuel because corn is somebody's food. There's a reason why Professor, Mr. Kalam Saab used to say about Jatropha, but even Pongemia can be a good source. Pongemia can be a good source. Gober gas. We spoiled this opportunity because we called it as gober gas. It is biogas. Biogas plants or even mini, mini plants have come. You can use a lot of mini plants. Sodic soil reclamation is very important. Even this sort of sodic soil, very bad soil, very bad soil can easily be reclaimed organically. No problem at all. We did this for UP, Uttar Pradesh, where that soil was converted into this. But one thing is it took us four and a half years to convert that into this. China wanted to do it. In fact, they had invited me and they wanted me to settle down over there, which I refused. But of course, we had continued, continued but unfortunately, there's no good relationships now between the countries, so work could not continue. Simple example of soil for your health. You look at the observer, the cow dung. If the cow dung dries up, your soil is bad. If the cow dung completely perforates, then there is good soil health. That's all. Because soil has a lot of microorganisms. That's Bernard from Oroville. And that's Deepika. Look at these uh, pebbles. They converted this pebble with just leaf litter and gober into a beautiful garden today. Beautiful garden today. Lots of things have happened, Raja. I was invited to Kurukshetra, where I designed these huge tanks for them. But uh, they had the funds for it. But for a simple farmer, we designed these two tanks. One for borewell water, one for cattle shed water. So what we do, we take all the cattle shed washing, we put it with the sumps, and then we start the motor. That is borewell water. This is cow dung, that is cow shed water. And when it comes out, we take 90% borewell water, 10% this water, and automatically we get Mimvasami. You get soil smell. Patents are coming up. For everything patents. Commodities bills are coming up. Minimum support price, which is now controversy is going on. Please brainwash, please go through it all that. Please, please read about it because there are likely questions to come over there. Because the Swaminathan Commission had recommended C2, cost C2, which is not being implemented. Now, what is being told is, according to Devendra Sharma, you can go through his blog spot. He works a lot on agricultural economics. A farmer's income today is 1,700 rupees per month at an average. So how to improve it is what is being considered, right? Because most of the farmers don't get the money for, which, for the product which they are selling. You people should work on it. Work on all these ordinances, how these ordinances are being uh, applied. What will happen with the MSP? What can be done for the MSP? How MSP can be improved? Otherwise, this is what the farmers have been There has doing. been a bump of production of tomatoes this year. However, the farmers in Chhattisgarh's Jashpur have thrown tons of tomatoes on road because of the sudden price drop. That's the thing. Please also understand about ecotone and edge effect. These are all part of a syllabus. Ecotone is between two different ecosystems. Please remember that. Two different ecosystems. Grassland on one side, forest on one side. In between is ecotone. The same thing in uh, river and the sea, you have estuary as an ecosystem. And, and please remember these mangroves. Yesterday was mangroves day. The river goes and meets into the sea. Mangroves are very important trees, very, very important trees of estuary and ecosystem, which are vanishing today. And for uh, South India, for Chennai, uh, Tamil Nadu, the best mangroves are Pichavar. India has Sundarbans. Vishakapatnam has very good uh, mangroves. So please try to read about mangroves because this year there was very importance given to mangroves. So please see to it that you read mangroves. The locust attack which happened in India, what might have been the reason? Why did this fellow come? Because this fellow leaves eggs and forgets about them. For years, for years, 
what actually might have been the reason. Children, when you take this particular area between Africa and India, African coast is warmer than Indian coast. So rain used to come to India. During 2018-19, in this region, what happened was there was a, the glaciers started melting and most of the ice started coming through this and went into the Indian Ocean Dipole. So here the Indian Ocean Dipole changed its values. The Indian side became warmer than the African side. So rain started coming into Africa. Once rain started coming in, all the eggs that were there already, they hatched. And these eggs started moving from place to place and landed into India. So there were several reasons said. Some people created noise, some people used chemicals, some people used organic. But if you analyze why did it happen, maybe loss of biodiversity. There are no birds to catch them. There are no soil dwellers to eat away the eggs. We have killed them. And monocropping patterns. At the same time, what helped them hatch? Torrential rains where it should not have happened. Now, what triggered that? Melting ice caps resulting in an abnormally high Indian Ocean dipole. Why did it happen? Climate change. So who is responsible? We are responsible. Please understand the concepts. Land, how it's being classified. Children, you have to do a lot of work on ecology. I cannot comprise the whole thing in two hours, but I'm trying to rush through so that you have all the ideas, Raja. Please understand. You see, we have these wetlands and we have wastelands. I was heading a committee for the government and when I investigated one particular land which should not have been classified and uh, they produced a document classifying that as waste wetland. There is no such classification in any college. How can wetland be a wasteland? And once you construct buildings over there, this is what happens during the monsoon. Please understand concepts of ecology. Fly ash from all these thermal plants. This is our Ennore Creek, which has spoiled the entire area. This is the amount of fly ash that is being coming out from the uh, thermal power station. And what happens to that area? Can you see this building? I think you can see this building. This, this once upon a time was a school. You see only the terrace, that much of fly ash. What you see here, which I'm showing with the pointer, is an overhead tank which was there once upon a time. So, so much of fly ash which has all the heavy metals in it. Please understand Raja ecology. That is the reason why we are ranking 177 out of 180 in Environment Performance Index. We have to do a lot of work Please understand, don't get biased just because some technology is modern or saying something. How best can we improve the living index? How best can we improve the environment index of our country? Please talk in those terms. Don't go out of passion. Even environmental impact assessment, we are changing all the rules now. All the rules we are changing because public NGO civil society cannot question once the government declares it as a project of national importance or project of strategic importance. No EIA, no public consultation. Several things can happen. Several things can happen. We do not know. I'm not going into the details of this, but please read this. Please read the document 2020. Please, please, please. In 1920, nature was the center. Today, capital money is the center. So from ecology, we have moved to economy. I'm not against economy, but should we not balance it? Can we understand the difference between lentic and lotic, which is in your syllabus? Lentic is water which stays. Lotic is the water which flows. Succession is there. I will not go into the details of succession, but just understand the concept. Simple concept, Raja. Boy comes from school. There is nothing in the veranda. He puts a chair and sits on the veranda. He put the chair. He sat there. He created an environment for Akka to come home. Akka sees him, feels very jealous, gets a pillow, Chases him away and she sleeps comfortably. So she added the pillow. Boy was the primary species or the primary seer, the primary stage. She is the second serial stage, second stage. Dad comes home. Dad feels it very, very comfortable. Makes her get up, puts a stool, puts his leg and relaxes. So dad added the stool. Now it is a full, perfect environment. A chair, a pillow, a stool, grandpa comes home, climax stage. Clear? 
Now you can read it, you will understand the concepts of succession. Probiotics are coming into the market. Please read about this also. Probiotics. Lactobacilli is one of the most important. What is probiotic? The moment you eat it, it goes through the stomach, hatches over there, goes into the uh, duodenum, germinates over there, multiplies in the intestine. That's, these are the probiotics. New terms are coming in. Don't ignore them. Nutrigenomics. Food based on your genome. We go to the hotel, we ask for a menu card. Future when you people become grandparents and we will not be there at that time. When you go to a restaurant, they will ask your menu card. Based on your genome, what is the food you are supposed to eat? In the same way, new terms, please note down, pharmacogenomics. Medicine based on genome. Medicine based on genome. Please understand this, okay? So diet for the future, if you ask me, I do not know. I do not know. Do I eat that for the future? I do not know. Hunger index. We are again going back, Raja. We have come to 102. In 2020, we have gone to again 102. Please remember, don't waste food. Please don't waste food. There's undernourished population. We are all overfed but undernourished. Please eat properly. I always recommend you follow our national flag. The first color, orange, saffron, which is carotene pigmentation. Eat something of that color every day. White, please take calcium, especially girls, women folk, take calcium, milk or any substitute. Green, take green colored vegetables. They don't have fiber. Chakra is blue. Water right from childhood, we have been painting it blue. Take sufficient quantity of water. And how many lines in the chakra? 24. 24 hours, follow our national flag. You'll get all sorts of nutrients. That's the school where I studied, Pondicherry, St. Joseph of Cluny is my foundation. Uh, my primary school, I have high love and regards for my school. They still give me the same, right? This is our food. These two, once in a way, you can have, Raja. Don't make it as a habit, please. Because even the birds grow over there. And you eat that, you'll become that, finally. Sweets, be careful. Color and aspartame. Sugar is not used today. Aspartame is a chemical. And color and sugar goes into the body, affects children. Lots of experiments have been done by Smithsonian University. Most dangerous colors are in the market. Please understand. Kesari is not Kesari anymore. It is cancery. Don't add color to it. Please understand. Please understand. All the colors are, they may be certified, but not good for health. All these, all these colors. You see, Malaysia has come with colored parotas. I don't understand the significance. Colored parotas. Orange is this color. Why is soft drink red in color? Color. Color. Understand? Color. So much of color goes through the sweet physical diet. Please understand. Please understand. Even peas sold in the market. Colored. Colored. Uh, most of the strawberry products available, colored. Silver is no more silver foil. This Government of India slide, not my slide. ITRC, Lucknow. That most of the uh, sweets with this foil is not silver foil. It is five heavy metals which can destroy the kidneys. Fruits ripened with the help of this Chinese puddy. Acetylene. So instead of ripening in a natural way, at stage 3, you get stage 12 with that color. All these are colored. Lots of things are coming in. Please understand. Palettes can, can cause endocrine disruptions. All this MSG, monosodium glutamate. Please understand. Please understand these things. They affect a lot. Please take care. And those who use these sort of things, please understand. They all have chemicals. They have a lot of chemicals. Lots of chemicals. And please understand commercialization. I used this when I was a kid. Today they ask me whether it has salt, whether it has charcoal. The same thing we were using it as child, right? Probiotics is becoming a business today. And the companies which are manufacturing probiotics are the same ones who are manufacturing antibiotics. Please understand. Probiotic, the best source is curd, especially along with pariasur. I think my Tamil students would have understood that. Today, hotels are selling it at a high price. 
So what is the best way of eating healthy? Don't eat what is advertised. Food doesn't require an advertisement. Right? Plastics, again, that may be a question for you because of modern things which are happening. There are seven types of plastics. Seven types of plastics. Previously, it was six. Now, seven is any other plastic. Some of them may have BPA. BPA is bisphenol A. Please understand. Any plastic you buy should have a triangle with a number inside. Don't buy any plastic without this triangle and a number inside. Please understand what is the classification. There may be a question for you. One, two, and five for food products. Seven now is included, but they must declare it as BPA-free, bisphenol A-free, because feeding bottles are coming in plastic number seven. All some, some companies put the triangle and the number is missing. That is, means they are cheating you. All foreign companies, any child product, they have to declare it as phthalate and BPA-free. You have to work a lot, Raja. All these thermocol plates, polystyrene, any hot food will release tyrion. This is meant only for biscuits and bread. The moment you put hot food, it will release tyrion. So you are eating cancer. Microplastics can be a good question for you, for ecological pollution. Microplastics have come in toothpaste and shampoos. First they said it has come in water. Now Chennai water, Redil's, six pieces in every liter of water recorded. It has come in salt. It came in fish. June 2020, it was recorded inside fruits and vegetables. And the worst thing is, very recently it has been recorded in the pleasanta. Armagil and the Marathuva Arai Chil, Thai say Yenekum Nanchikodil, Nun Nikari Tukal Kandapadika Patula, other Shiger Patil, Ulahile, Padakapana, Yedam Genshin and Nakum Thai and Karuba, plastic. Please understand. And it has been reported in Velacheri, Chennai, in the air, microplastics. So please, please, please understand. Please, they, this can come through any source. So please understand. And this, I happened to visit one very good medical college. And this is how things were lying out straight. Please understand what. So please, children, be creative, Raja. There's a few things for you. Be creative. Boss does this. Madam doesn't like it. Adam breaks it. Some tips for you, Raja. Convert it into a tabla. Be creative in life. Eco-friendly technology liberates. Modern technology subjugates. Follow certain things. Move from crop-centric to farmer-centric agriculture, which will be good for farmer. But whatever you do, including your own studies, have patience, Tanna. Today, people are ready to push you down. Push you down. Right? So please, please take care. Please take care. Work as a team and study. In team, do you find the alphabet I? Just look at it carefully. Yes, I is there inside. Right? But should not be known. So supposing somebody does it and somebody else passes the exam and I don't pass the exam, even though I have coached as a team, I should be proud of it. I should not say it is I who did it. Is that clear? It's a team. Otherwise, one person will be doing, the other person will be cheating the whole thing. So do a teamwork. Work as a team. I always love this statement by Kalyanji poet, Tamil poet. We are able to see elephants, but we are not able to see earthworms. And please don't compare with others. The whole world is burning. Can we cool it down? Can we rewarm the world? When it rains, there are no burrows to take the water inside. So once earthworms come back and create burrows, subsurface water will automatically increase. People talk about global warming. I talk about global warming. Yes, children. This word vermitech, vermitech, this word was coined by me for the world. I coined the term vermitech for the world in 1982. That's my contribution, which children have read in these textbooks and which children wrote in these examinations and which children today in schools read in the textbooks in class 12 about my work. That is passion. It is not the marks, it is not the position which you occupy, which takes you where you are. So whatever you want to do, children, do it with passion and you will make a mark. Please, children, work hard. Work hard. Try your best. But whatever is there for you, do it with passion. You will get it, Raja. You will get it. One simple analogy. It rains, the water falls on the soil. The water 
water belongs to the soil. If you keep a pot and collect water in it, that water belongs to you. But I gave you that pot. So whom does that water belong to? This is the question for the daily farmer's agitation. I won't go into the details. Please understand. The best word for all these things is management. Without the last letter T, it is manage men, manage human beings. And without the last letter N, it is manage me. Learn to manage yourself. Then you can manage others. That is management. You don't require an MBA degree to understand this. And don't say that it is not your job. Everything is our job. Even this fellow could have gone normally, but sees to it that so somebody should not meet with an accident, keeps it and then walks past. Let us do it. Let us try to be a weightlifter in life and not a porter in life. Both carry weight, but one feels it heavy. The other one, the heavier feels happier. So let us become weightlifters. You don't require any special training for this. Please put in your efforts. Put in your efforts. There's a simple book which I had created along with a team for children, which uh, I happen to also associate with the APJ sir for discussions. The team is created today, which is being used in Poland and most of the schools here. It's all available online. I believe this statement by Tagore, with every child comes a message that God is not a disappointed man. So uh, let us leave behind a healthy environment, all for Earth's sake, that's our eye view, but who cares? There's a Tamil book, which has all the uh, details by Ananda Vigadan. Vigadan Publishers, if you want, you can buy that. All the best children, good luck to you all. The details are here. The first website gives you all the information on composting. The third one gives you those 100 science experiments. And that's my email ID. If you have questions, anything, you can write to me. Except don't ask for the presentation because you have seen 562 slides. So don't ask for a presentation. It's already recorded. It's already there on the YouTube. You can have a look at it. Is that clear? You can ask for questions. I unfortunately, whenever I get a mail, they say, sir, can you attach your presentation and send it? No, please don't write to anybody, not one for me. Okay. Good luck. I'll come out of the presentation. Sir. Salpa. Sir, thank you so much, sir. Shall we take just a few questions, sir? Okay, Pa. Ninga Sonar to wait on Anna and Ilya and Chalapa. Friends, please post your question in uh, Q and a box. We'll take uh, one by one. Sir, Keith is asking, Sir, we have sudden explosion of endocrine disorders, thyroid in our country, especially yes. urban areas. Is there any connection between input in agriculture or dairy or poultry or meat or processing of food that is linked to this public health crisis? I, I will not answer this because you are given the answer yourself. <laughs> they are using a lot of hormones. Even uh, I happen to see in some farms, where uh, they inject pituitary hormone, which is a growth hormone, into vegetables for soraka and other things so that they can become big. All artificial colors, artificial hormones, animal hormones being injected into plants, all these things just to achieve uh, big size and uh, value. Unfortunately, we relate to big size as something very good. So it's, it's very, uh, very, very wrong. Uh, oh. I, I, I would not. Some Lavinia has raised her hand. Yes, sir. Actually, there are many candidates. Many so, candidates. Okay. okay. Uh, can you discuss about the effect of cattle rearing on a greenhouse gas emission? Uh, the, the problem is most of the experiments are done in laboratories where any amount of dung which you take and keep it inside the lab, it will generate methane. But the moment the dung falls in a fertile soil, there are organisms which act on it and convert it into nitrate products. So the methane gas is, being not, is not being released. It's only when you accumulate cow dung and dump it at a place in an anaerobic situation that methane will be produced. Yes. Sir, and, uh, uh, sir instead of uh, reading all these questions, shall I ask them to raise hands just a few questions? Oh, yes. I leave it yeah. to you. Yes, sir. Please raise your hands. So in between, there are a few questions. So please uh, uh, tell about your experience with uh, Abdul Kalam, sir. Ah, nice gentleman, wonderful person, recognizes, very humble. 
it so happened that we happened to meet, uh, I happened to meet him in the month of August in a particular year. And the same December, I, I'm resource person for the Children's Science Congress. And he happened to be the chief guest. Uh, I was in the second row of, uh, of uh, resource people. First row was occupied by VIPs. And uh, he just uh, came in and uh, he's, he went to the stage and he doesn't sit quiet on the stage. You know, he starts looking at everybody like this. And suddenly the moment our eyes met after three months, he started waving from there. <laughs> you know, like, uh, and uh, my other professors seated next to me, they asked me, uh, do you know him? Uh, uh, I said, uh, I know him, but he may not remember, but he, he just happened to, we happened to have a discussion and uh, he remembers me even till today. And that I felt really happy on that day. I really felt happy on that day. In fact, I'm associated with his family now. I'm associated with the Abdul Kalam Foundation. I have been one of the mentors for the entire Abdul, Abdul Kalam Foundation, which is functioning from Ramadapuram. His grandsons, Dawood and Salim are always in touch with me for anything. Yeah. Great, sir. The next one, uh, Gag is asking, sir, the industrial solid waste, which is radioactive or biohazardous, how does that affect soil and how the harm uh, that has already been done can be reversed or mitigated? You know, uh, the problem is any technology, once it is being manufactured or a technology is being developed, the, the company or the person who develops the technology also works for how to handle the waste which comes out of it. Any technology generates waste. Even kitchen, if you take a technology, then kitchen also generates waste. So, but we know how to handle it. So we should know how to handle it and it was given. But unfortunately, many industries do not take that part. They just feel it comfortable to release it because it involves excess money into it. So especially radioactive material has to be handled with utmost care and you are aware of it. Uh, it is not that I, uh, you do not know about it. It's biohazardous. It can cause mutations. It can cause a lot of things. That's the reason why many people object to radioactive plants near uh, uh, settlements. And that's one of the reasons why many people are trying to fight against the uh, nuclear plants which are being put up in Tamil Nadu. So next one, sir. Uh, good evening, sir. Govardhan is asking. So good evening, sir. Uh, to begin with uh, vermi, uh, vermi composting at home, where to get worms? Hey, just Google it. You'll get all the information. <laughs> so the next one, recommend, but now I don't recommend anybody. Okay. Uh, so next one, uh, is it healthy and safe for the residential environment, especially groundwater, to grow teak trees and sandalwood in house? Sandalwood, you have to inform the government, you have to inform the agriculture department, forest department, before you grow sandalwood. Because sandwood trees you can grow, but you are not supposed to cut them without the permission of the forest department. We were talking recently with the forest department that domestically grown or farmer grown things should not come under that area. But uh, they are yet to take a decision. In fact, we had that discussion uh, just about a month or uh, 40 days before with the officers. Okay, sir. Sir, one uh, request, sir. Mm -hmm. Sir, please make one platform to share the youngsters' ideas with you for e ecological development. You are most welcome, young man or young woman, whoever has written. You are most welcome to come and discuss with me. Absolute no problem. I have always been a teacher and this is my 47th year of teaching. And I enjoy talking to youngsters and motivating you. So don't worry, Raja. Sir, uh, next one, sir. Kuku was clean uh, long years ago, but now due to pollution, it has become impure. Is it possible to rehabilitate river? Yeah, any rivers can be rehabilitated. You see, the problem with us is even kuwam, we would like to clean the kuwam. But unless you try to block the inputs into the kuwam, you cannot clean the kuwam. Whether it's kuwam or Adyar River or Buckingham Canal or any river system, even Ganges is failing because the input is not being blocked. Any effort you put for cleaning the river will be a waste unless the input into the river is being blocked. And there are so many ethical issues, religious issues, uh, social issues which come in. And finally, the whole thing becomes a failure. Yes, sir. sir another one is a good question, sir. Uh, Kulasayar asks, sir, with the population explosion, there is need for more production. How traditional seeds can manage with the higher productivity? It is not traditional seed that I'm talking about. I'm talking about the entire component of agriculture. Because the way we are going doing agriculture today, our soils have gone completely almost barren and may not be able to support proper growth of food. 
and what you're going to eat in the course of time is only fortified food, which is company manufactured food, which is not food, it's a product. I hope you have to understand the differences. And uh, many people ask me the same question that uh, without chemicals, you can't grow food. It, it's, it's, it's not uh, so. All the states have now got up. In fact, even today, with the meeting with uh, Chandigarh, uh, Chhattisgarh Planning Commission was, how best can we incorporate organics into food production? Because unless organic matter is in the soil, food cannot be improved, food cannot be produced. Initially, it can go into a hybrid model and gradually go into a totally non-chemical model. Yes, sir. So the next one, so actually Lavanya textured one of big questions, sir. I think uh, it will take more time. Uh, so you, uh, so is it, uh, uh, so you are mentioning about organic food, uh, it's very good for health, but uh, uh, it cannot be uh, uh, affordable for all people, all section of people, yeah. or because um, no, organic no. Yeah, what he's asking is a very, very appropriate question. Unfortunately, it is being priced high by some corporates. You know, like mm. it, it, it can be marginally high, not as high as it is being marketed in the shops. I fully agree to what uh, the question has been asked. Uh, you know, like in the US, as I showed you the pictures, it's very expensive to produce manure. In India, cow dung is respected. So people handle it with hand itself. So producing manure is not very expensive in India. Only thing is transportation is becoming expensive in India because organic uh, farmers are scattered. They are not in one place. So they cannot load their product into the same cargo which carries chemical vegetables. So they send it by buses. So it becomes a bit expensive. A bit expensive is okay. I would appreciate that you buy directly from the farmers. There are lots of farmers. If you are in Chennai, on OMR, there's the oldest farmer who started the first shop. Ranganathan shop is there. You can uh, buy it from there at affordable prices. Next one, there is also an important question, sir. What are the solutions for fly ash generated from thermal power? Uh, I will not go into Even it because I was the coordinator from the National Green Tribunal to investigate and give the report to the government. And uh, very silently, the governments have been sitting over it. Uh, so I am trying to re revive it in the present government now. Uh, you see. Mm -hmm. Fly ash should be handled properly. Unfortunately, the fly ash has lots of heavy metals in it. And it is blocking the water waste. There's a lot of work. I think uh, you should contact Niti for it. Nityanand Jairaman. Uh, he would give you a very critical review of it. In fact, uh, the uh, singer TM Krishna is also involved in the project. Janagraj is involved in the project for, for people's sake. I was involved as an NGT investigator. And I have given a complete consolidated report about it. The problem is it is really dangerous. It is not as simple as I could say. It is very, very dangerous and it's completely spoiling the Kosatalaya uh, river basin. It's the entire biota and the plants and vegetables growing over there. I hope you would have got the point. Read between the lines I spoke. <laughs> <laughs> Next one. Uh... Rohit, uh, Rohit is asking, sir, uh, these eco-friendly technologies uh, which you mentioned, though successful in your place, is not at any large scale or option. What's the reason and what are the solutions? You see, most of the technologies are now adopted by terrace gardeners because it is in their own homes. As far as farmers are concerned, most of the farmers have to take a loan for growing their own crops. And uh, children, loan means not money. Loan means chemical fertilizer, chemical pesticide, seeds given by the government, and a little bit of money. It's uh, The choice is not given to the farmer to use whatever he wants. So unfortunately, it will take some more time. It's picking up a lot. Many people are talking now towards moving towards organic. They have to, because many diseases are now linked with lots of chemicals which are being around us for a long time. Uh, some may not agree. Some may disagree. It's okay. Disagreement has to be there. I, I don't deny. Even uh, GMO, some of you may feel that transgenic crops are good. Some of you may say that uh, GM crops are good. Maybe to you it may be good, but I look at it holistically. I don't look at it as to what is good for a human being. I look at it, what happens to the transgenic leaf, which falls to the ground, which uh, decomposes over there. What happens to the microbial population over there? What happens to the earthworm population over there? What happens to the cow which eats over there? And what happens to the milk which produces? So I look at it in a holistic way, children. So it it, it matters a lot. Yes, sir. The next one, uh, 
sir only very few farm lands are truly organic since it takes nearly 7 years for uh, fertilized soil to be converted into organic it is 3 also, years sir, you are not aware years. right it is 3 years as uh, you, you go through the website of ifom international federation of organic agriculture movement you will get all the inputs yes, how sikkim became successful in achieving first organic state sir it was by default transporting urea and dap over sikkim to the mountains is very expensive and farmers could not afford in fact governments are taking credit for a default system it is not government's job it is the people's job okay. so how to find a vegetable is organic or not uh, it is very difficult we have to trust that's the reason i buy straight from the farmers whom i know yes sir yes sir yes sir okay sir so actually there are more than still 50 questions I think it will take more time. You can copy when you check it. I am going to put it. That is the problem. Pass the number. Okay, sir. Sir, thank you so much, sir, for accepting. Thank you. Thank you, and all the best and good luck to you all, Chandru, and uh, your team, to all the students. Good luck to you all, students. All the best. Yes, thank sir. Thank you. you, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank, thank you for entertaining your students. Thank you, sir. Thank you. I'll call you, sir. Friends, thank you.